humans are growing, the populations are growing, and that leads to increase in, in conflict with uh, wildlife as human needs and wildlife needs start to compete. Humans are kind of invading more upon the, our land and our natural resources. I'm interested to know how, how deeply, how greatly that affects animals to the point of extinction. It's important to me that we work with local peoples when we're talking about conservation issues and for a long time these things were divorced. Luckily, fortunately, in the last 10, 20 years, I think there's been a congruence, the idea that you conserve local cultures and conserve nature, species, whatever, at the same time because there's an overlap. The environment um, is at a point where it is kind of massively in danger, but I think that it's not necessarily going to be left by the wayside because of people's opinion about the environment. I think that the communication of science is already beginning to change and hopefully beginning to actually captivate people more than shove them away. So this evening I'm speaking to two Earthwatch scientists, Dr. Russell Hill and Eva Kovacic, about their projects in human wildlife conflict. So, Russell, tell us a little bit about your project to start with. Uh, so the project I'm involved with is based in the Sackensburg Mountains in the very uh, northeast of South Africa. Uh, and what we're examining is uh, the interactions that uh, the primates and predator communities have there with the local human populations. Okay, so why is it important, this research? Well, we know that both uh, predators and primates can cause significant economic loss uh, through taking livestock or through raiding crops. Uh, and what we're looking to understand are, are the factors that drive that and cause uh, the animals to behave in this way, but also the factors that underpin why the human communities retaliate or, or take lethal action against the wildlife populations. So do you think um, this activity is increasing? Is it becoming more of a, a problem and why is it becoming more of a problem? Uh, it does seem to be becoming more of a problem uh, as land becomes increasingly converted uh, from uh, natural vegetation uh, for use in agriculture or housing. It's bringing uh, humans and wildlife into uh, closer contact with one another. Uh, the mountains in which we work are effectively serving as a refuge for the animals to uh, retreat into when they're being drawn out and driven out of the, the lower lying uh, areas. So uh, as more and more land gets converted for, for human use, uh, the uh, intensity of human wildlife conflict is increasing. So at the end of the project, what are you hoping to achieve? Well, what we're looking at ways is to uh, facilitate effectively uh, coexistence between humans and wildlife. So in understanding the, the factors that cause primates to raid crops and uh, uh, predators to, to take livestock, and also the, the human perceptions that sort of drive human behaviour and, uh, and lethal retaliatory action, uh, we can look to uh, uh, mechanisms for, that uh, can help uh, strategies really to try and minimise the conflict between uh, the humans and the wildlife. Okay, so trying to find some solutions to help support that coexistence in yeah, the future. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So Evie, going on to your project, you've been looking more at marine systems than Russell's terrestrial systems. Um, just explain a bit about your project and, and why you feel it, um, it's important. Um, well, I'm working in North Norway and the islands of Vesteralen and Lofoten. Uh, we're working in basically in the interactions between people and cetaceans in the area. And we're also looking at the ecology of whales and dolphins in the area, but um, necessarily we're touching the part of interactions because this is the part that's actually increasing in the last years. Okay, when you, when you say interactions, what type of interactions are they? Uh, well, we have one part which is kind of historical interactions, um, like fishing or whaling, and then we have new interactions that have been developed in the last five or ten years, such as, for example, whale watching or um, oil drilling, which has also started happening in the area. So, the interactions are increasing? Um... Yeah, we, th we are actually finding some evidence that there is more and more uh, increase in the interactions and in the consequence for the whale population. So when you, when you say the consequence for whale populations, what, what types of things are you finding? Uh, well, most recently, like in the beginning of this year, in the, in the field we have found some lethal cases. Uh, so we have found some bycatch of small stations, and we have also found uh, whales that were struck by a boat, and of course it had lethal consequences for the whales. 
So in terms of your overall aims, what are you hoping to achieve with, with your project? Uh, well, one part of it is that we're hoping to involve the local community more into the research itself. And then we're trying to feed the results of this research into new policy and new regulations that would actually help us to manage these interactions. Okay. And do you think you could apply the types of things you're doing in Norway um, around the world for, in, in different studies? Um, well, probably in, in places that have a similar background. So, for instance, in Norway there is a specific thing that there are no regulations that are regarding marine mammals and, for instance, uh, oil exploration or marine mammals and whale watching. Um, so I think, yeah, it could be applicable in the areas that don't have the regulations either. Okay, so it sounds like you're also looking and investigating about how, how we could come up with some solutions to help aid that coexistence in future. Yeah, exactly, because this is all with the goal of um, sustainable development of the region and also of the people being able to live with the nature and with the wildlife that's there. Well, I know you're both really busy to finish off preparing your talks this evening. I really look forward to, to hearing your lectures and having a discussion about the ways we can go forward. Well, thank you very much.